This is a review of episodes 1 through 5 of Psychopath 2. Before I get into any spoilers, I'm going to speak vaguely about the series so far so that if you're still trying to decide whether or not you want to watch, then you can figure it out. But then I'll warn you when I'm going to get into the spoilery analysis part of the video. Everyone knows how crazy into the first season of Psychopaths I was, so I had crazy high expectations when I first started this show. And so far, yeah, I liked it. It's good, but it's still not quite there yet for me. Sometimes during a particularly graphic or violent scene, I'm left wondering, what's the reason behind this? Are they just doing this to be shocking, or do they actually need this scene? It's gotten very gory already, despite what seemed to have been promised at the beginning of the series, which was that our main character, Sunemori Akane, was trying to avoid using the lethal setting on her dominator. Despite taking place in the same universe with the same characters, it does feel like a different show entirely, and I'm not exactly sure why that is. Maybe the problem is that the show at the moment lacks a dynamic character relationship like we had in the first series with Kogami and Tsunemori. Now the focus is solely on Tsunemori, and she was really my biggest problem with the first series because of how just plain boring she was. There are a lot of conflicts brewing, but none of them have come to light quite yet, so at the end of each episode I'm just left wanting. When I watched the first episode of the first season of Psychopaths, I w was won over pretty much immediately because of how smart and shocking and fast-paced it was. I do feel like this series is trying to top itself in all three of those categories, so it comes off as trying a bit too hard. However, I do still find it very entertaining, and I really do want to keep watching and find out the conclusion to not only this conflict, but also these characters. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about spoilers for the series. So if you haven't seen up to episode 5 of Psychopaths 2, then you should not watch any more of this video. That being said, I am expecting that you've also seen the first season of Psychopaths, so there will be spoilers for that as well. I know I seemed very harsh in the review, but it's only because I liked the original so much. I knew it would be difficult to build off the events of the original because Kogami was gone and Makishima is dead. The rivalry between those two guys was pretty much my favorite part, and they were both gone. I don't really know what to make of Kamui, if he's a crazy mastermind or if he's just crazy. He has the ability to draw people in with promises of keeping their hue clear, and up until this point he seems to be delivering on those promises. It looks like his M.O. is pretty much the same as Makishima's, though, where he kind of recruits people to carry out their own evil, which happens to run parallel to whatever he's trying to do. As of right now, he seems to be collecting dominators and slowly taking out inspectors and enforcers. Makishima's original goal in Psychopaths was to expose how corrupt the civil system was, which was, you know, once you got to the end of the series, kind of a, a noble intention when you looked back at it, because the civil system really was quite corrupt. I'd hate to see Kamui walk down this same road, because we don't need that twist to happen a second time. The only name that Kamui really has made for himself is not Makishima, which is always the trouble for second season villains. Right now we have to rely on the new inspectors and the new enforcers, all of whom are sort of lacking in comparison to the original group. Our new inspector is Shimotsuki, who is an incredibly inconsistent character, aside from her consistent ability to be whiny and bitchy. And I know that's supposed to be the point of her character, because she's disrespectful towards the enforcers, and she tattles on everyone, and she's always complaining. Everything about her is very unlikable, so it's not enjoyable to watch her on screen. At least when Ginoza was being whiny and bitchy, he was at least righteous and he cared about his job, despite trying to protect his psychopaths. I really do want some more focus on Ginoza because he had such a dramatic shift in lifestyle from the first season to the second season, and so far he seems to be taking it very gracefully. Aside from an apparent budding relationship between Ginoza and the inspector Aoyanagi, he hasn't really gotten any development and then Aoyanagi was killed one episode later. There are a couple new enforcers too, Hinakawa and Togane. Hinakawa has no backstory and really no personality aside from that he's just awkward. Togane information is pretty limited as well, but at least we know a bit about him. Like, he has the highest crime coefficient ever recorded. 
Not to mention, he clearly has an obsession with Tsune Mori, which is a dangerous combination of traits. It does feel a little bit silly that they put a guy like him in a position of authority where he can wield a weapon and make people explode. But this is the Sybil system, and they are crazy. This second series also introduced us to the concept of trying to clear your psychopaths with medication, but there's controversies in doing so. Apparently it can turn you into a slug, so you're not capable of feeling any emotions, including happiness. I guess it's not a proven side effect, but there is a desire to keep it hidden from the public, so that's a reason to be suspicious. Kamui seems to be going about his plan from all different angles, attacking simultaneously, and he has a wide variety of talents, from hacking to smooth-talking. He's got this politician he somehow replaced, and he's got the dominators, and now he's got this video game which activated actual drones to kill people. The thing that I'm going to need from this series is for all of these threads to weave together into a bigger picture. So this series kind of raises the question of whether restraint or suppressing our instincts is really the best way to go about things. This is why that man went into the facility and started killing people in order to spike his own adrenaline rush and also to induce fear in people so that they could feel alive. Kamui has the ability to cheat the system somehow, which makes the entire system completely obsolete, and that was touched on in the first series. If the system can't work on even just one person, then it's not a complete system and it can't work at all. The end of episode 5 showed the chief, who is a robot, seemingly changing brains with someone else who has some kind of connection to what's going on. At least that's how I interpreted what was happening. I guess this series only has 11 episodes, so I'll watch the next five episodes on my own and do a review kind of like this video. And then the last episode, I guess, I'll do a watching. Obviously, that won't be for another month or so, so I'll just see you then. Bye!